Hi guys, I'm back. In this video, we're gonna talk about keto side effects and how they can reveal uh, a deeper story of what's going on in the body. Um, keto and intermittent fasting magnify subclinical deficiencies. So let's say you're going into keto or doing intermittent fasting and you already have uh, some nutritional deficiencies. Well, everything's gonna be magnified because when you do keto, the demand for certain nutrients goes up. So what we wanna do is use the symptoms to reveal the deeper problem, okay? So let's say, for example, you have nausea, okay? You're nauseated. That's gallbladder. So you may wanna look into other issues that can occur with a gallbladder problem, uh, not just the stone, but just like a bile deficiency. You can start showing uh, signs of deficiency in vitamin A with your vision at night when you're driving, uh, vitamin E, K2, vitamin D low, and that could happen because you have a fatty liver. So there's a huge connection between fatty liver and gallbladder problem, okay? So again, you wanna use this as a clue to kind of pull a string to see if there's something uh, deeper. Okay, fatigue is usually a low vitamin B1, thymine, and low magnesium. These two nutrients act as a spark plug in your mitochondria, so they help the energy production. So over time, if you continue this plan with these deficiencies and you continue to have fatigue, chances are you'll quit. When the simple solution is, supply nutritional yeast or uh, more vegetables to satisfy these two things and get your energy back quick. All right, so let's say for example, you have keto flu. Well, if you don't know that keto flu is a decrease in salt or a, a, a sodium deficiency, and let's say for example, you take more potassium, okay, which is the opposing mineral, you'll exaggerate the symptoms of this deficiency. You'll make it worse. So you have to kind of know uh, what this symptom means when you're doing keto and IF. Let's say you're bloating. One possible reason is because you have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, where the microbes are growing in the wrong place in the small intestine. And it, the more vegetables that you add to the body and the more probiotics, the worse it becomes. What you need when you have SIBO is decrease the vegetables, don't take any probiotics, and definitely don't take any fermented products because they have prebiotics and probiotics together. And then uh, you have to increase the acidity of your stomach, betaine hydrochloride or apple cider vinegar. Take herbal antibiotics like oregano, garlic for about a month to handle this. All right, so the next one, gout symptoms. Let's say your big toe hurts. So that means you have too much uric acid. Well, uric acid is a byproduct of protein. So if you're taking too much protein on this plant and you get gout and all of a sudden you get on medication, you cover up the symptom, but you never lessen your protein, you can create other issues like an increase in ammonia, which can lead to all sorts of toxicity. All right, so let's say you have dark urine. What does that usually mean? You're dehydrated. You just need to increase your fluids, add some electrolytes to it, and that will help as well. Let's say you get a rash, keto rash. Potentially that could be a low B3. I recently did a video on subclinical pellagra, which is uh, some of the symptoms of uh, vitamin B3, which is a rash around your neck or the hands. Potentially you could have this and you go to the doctor and they start taking all sorts of creams, prednisone cream, which is cortisol, and then create all sorts of side effects from there. So it's good to know what causes what. Let's say you start getting cramps. Usually that's low magnesium and low potassium. Now, if you don't supply those minerals back into the body, over time, you potentially could develop arrhythmias of the heart, atrial fibrillation, and a lot of other issues because you need these minerals for uh, proper relaxation and contraction of your muscles. Let's say, for example, you do keto and you get bleeding gums. Well, it could be you're consuming no vegetables, okay, and you're doing uh, food that has no vitamin C. Let's say you're just doing chicken breast or something like that. And because you don't have vitamin C, you develop what's called a subclinical scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency, and bleeding gums is one of the symptoms. So there's a lot of other issues that can occur with vitamin C deficiencies. So this clue will immediately tell you, you need to beef up your vegetables, no pun intended. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. So to prevent me from running out of content, I have a new survey. I wanna find out what you are interested in. So please fill it out. The link's down below.